Buona serata, everyone. <laughs> This video is going to be another kind of review, just going through my thoughts on a Jalo I recently watched, and that Jalo is Hatchet for the Honeymoon by Mario Bava. I have selected this movie for no real reason besides the fact that I just happened to think to take notes while I watched it. This video is going to be full of spoilers on the movie, so if you haven't watched it yet, I would suggest watching it, or if you don't give a crap, let's continue. Director Mario Bava is super famous in the Italian cinema world. Honestly, if I couldn't tell you what he's most famous for, but I can name a few jolly that he's responsible for, including The Girl Who Knew Too Much, Blood and Black Lace, Five Dolls for an August Moon, Bay of Blood, and Shock, and a whole bunch of other stuff. He did a lot. So, Hatchet for the Honeymoon was released in 1970, and it's about a killer who kills brides. And he's doing this because he thinks that every time he murders someone, it, it helps him get a little closer to remembering this, this repressed memory he's trying to dig up. Something happened in his childhood, and he's trying to remember. So, our main character is this dashing man named John, and it is revealed to us that he's the killer from the very beginning. That's how we start off. We get very cool internal monologue from him, so we're in his thoughts. And it's so interesting because he knows he's a madman, and that's how he describes himself, and he's just like owning it. Like he's fully self-aware, and I just like him. So we're gonna take a little side road here. John is played by Stephen Forsyth. He is a Canadian. He's a multidisciplinary artist, so he's involved with a lot in the fine arts. But he was an actor in Italy for a short period of time. His filmography spans from 1964 to 1970. And this, Hatchet for the Honeymoon, is his very last film. Okay, and I just wanted to know a little bit more about Stephen Forsyth. So I, I was digging around a little bit, and I did see it in an interview that he kind of implied that he likes to lay low. So that could be why it's kind of hard to find info about him like as a person. But I wanted to, I wanted to find something about him even if it was some of his art, right? But I was having a hard time. What I did find was a GoFundMe that someone set up for him. Because in December 2018, he suffered two strokes. And I don't know what happened with that. Um, the GoFundMe is still there and still open, but there have been no donations and no updates in two years. Perhaps he has made it home and he's just kind of living a quiet life best he can. But anyway, let's get back on track. Our main character, John, he's trapped in an awful marriage with this wretched lady named Mildred. Mildred is played by Laura Betty who has been in other jolly like Bay of Blood. And I did glance at her filmography and she's just been in a ton of stuff. So yeah, they're married, but they hate each other. Mildred won't let John divorce her just to be a jerk. Like she just wants to be an extra jerk. Just to keep him trapped. As I watch this film, um, it's beautiful. The views are beautiful. Like everything you're seeing is beautiful. The scenery, the landscapes, the architecture, the clothing, the people. Everything is just beautiful and there are colors and all that like I just like a visually pleasing Jalo. The camera work, the acting, I enjoyed all of it. Okay, so our character John, he is a designer in a fashion house that makes wedding dresses. I always like when a Jalo involves models so we have a bunch of beautiful models prancing around all the time. Also in the cast we have Dagmar Lassander, or is it Lassander? She is another beloved Jalo queen. She's also been in Iguana with the Tongue of Fire and Forbidden Photos of a Lady Above Suspicion, which I haven't seen yet. Also, fun fact, her name was used in another movie I just watched called We Are Still Here from 2015. They named a family the Dagmars because of her. So yeah, Dagmar plays a model named Helen. Um, also in the cast, we have another model named Alice, who is played by Femi Benussi. She's another super beautiful actor who has played in other jollies such as Death Knocks Twice and So Sweet, So Dead. Okay, so John's whole thing is that as soon as he finds out someone's going to get married, well, a beautiful lady is going to get married, he kills them. 
He kills several models in his fashion house for that exact reason. This kind of reminded me of another movie I just watched called Five Women for the Killer, wherein that killer is killing women who find out they're pregnant. Anyway, so John's just like doing his thing, like living his life or whatever, and Mildred is just ruining his life. She's making him miserable. So he ends up putting on a wedding veil one night and just murdering her. So apparently, according to Wikipedia, this plot line, you could kind of call it like a B-plot of John and Mildred's awful marriage, was just added into the script because Laura Betty it just seems so mean, I guess. So to accommodate her and like her style, they added that layer to the story. But I like it. I can see now that you could totally detach that from the movie and the movie would be fine, but I like how it fits in. It's just like another layer that I thought was very interesting and fun. So after Mildred gets killed, she's doing this kind of like reverse haunt sort of thing. So everywhere John goes, everyone else can see Mildred with him and he can't see her. But then by the end, she switches it. So he's the only one that can see her. And she says, I'm going to be right next to you forever. John's killing people and all that, trying to get closer to that memory. His last victim is Helen, but he doesn't succeed in killing her. She manages to evade him. Even so, he's able to uncover that memory he's been trying to get at. He remembers that when he was a little boy, he killed his mother and her fiance because he was so upset that his mother was going to get married. There we go, all tied up in a nice little bow. Oh yeah, and Helen was actually not a model. She was working with the police. So that brings an end to John's reign of terror. But anyway, I like when a movie can have this theme that, that's pervasive throughout. So we have this theme of brides and weddings in the childhood causing the trauma. We have the theme of brides and weddings as his job and then the theme of brides and weddings as his incentive to kill. We have this unity here where brides are relevant throughout. Additionally, we have a guy who wishes he could unmarry his bride and he can't. I thought this movie was really great. It was super fun. Like I said, it came out in 1970. So what I'm noticing with the, the Jolly from the 60s and like the very early 70s, we don't get a lot of sleaze, we don't get a lot of nudity, we don't get a lot of extreme violence, which is fine. You know, it kind of um, becomes a little more watchable, it becomes a little bit more of a relaxed experience. However, I just really, I really love the wild violence that they put into these jolly. So I could have used a little bit more, especially with that alternate title, Blood Brides, like I would have liked to see more blood. <laughs> Overall, this is a very stylish yet subtle Jalo with many unique characteristics and that nice pervasive theme throughout, staying relevant from start to finish, and visually just a lovely experience. Now apparently, also according to Wikipedia, this movie suffered through production hell. That always raises my appreciation, makes me feel a little bit sorry for everyone involved. But apparently people weren't getting along, uh, they ran out of a budget, they were having problems with filming locations. It sounded messy. I couldn't tell from my end that anything was wrong behind the scenes. I thought everything looked real smooth. However, I'm no expert. So that wraps up my thoughts on Hatchet for the Honeymoon by Mario Bava from 1970. I thought it was a super fun time. I wouldn't call it one of my top favorites, but it's I think it's a really great installment into this genre. I think if I continue to do videos like this, I'm either going to focus on movies that I really loved or really hated, okay? Unless you have a specific request that you want to hear me talk about, please always let me know. But I don't I don't think I want to just talk about movies that were just good. It was just cool. Like it was a cool movie. You know, I feel like I need to have a more extreme perspective one on one end or the other. Hope you liked this though. Let a ho know if you have 
any jolly or horror movies or anything that you want me to talk about and we'll see if I can continue to get better at these pseudo reviews. <laughs> One more thing. It's been almost five years since I started this channel and I'm finally trying to up my game a little bit. So you might notice some cool music kicking in right about now. That's because I'm putting an end card on this video like a professional. Okay, ciao.